I'll be speaking about yoga therapy and the ways in which I would work with someone who has anxiety. Perhaps you might ask, what is yoga therapy? Um, yoga therapy empowers and supports an individual to manage their own health using the tools of yoga, which has been designed in a way that is specific for that person. A yoga therapist is an experienced yoga teacher with additional qualifications, specialised skills and knowledge in the application of yoga within that therapeutic setting. Together, the therapist and the student will develop a self-empowering therapeutic program appropriate to the student's individualised needs with the aim of bringing them back to a state of balance physically, physiologically, psychologically and energetically. If needed, I would work with someone in a complementary way, um, including other allied health and natural therapy um, professionals. I feel it's really important to take into consideration the whole health of the individual. No one is the same, so why would I give a practice the same way uh, for someone else? So, for example, if someone who is an amputee and has PTSD, they definitely have a different yoga therapy practice to someone who has social anxiety as well as reflux. Some of the more common tools of yoga that I'd use to create a desired effect for you would be, and you might have heard of some of them already, um, it'd be the asana, the movements, and there could be a lot of modifications in within those movements. Pranayama or breath work, so using the inhale, exhale, breath holds, ratios, nostril breathing. Um, dhyana or meditation. So not all meditation I found to be suitable for people with anxiety. So you need, I'd like to select one that would be best for them. Chanting. And I think someone last night had um, the really powerful effects that sound can have on people. And we use the different pitch, volume and length and meter to have a desired effect for that individual. We also use in visualizations, mudras, and perhaps some lifestyle factors, sometimes referred to as the yamas and niyamas. Maybe you might have heard of them already. So a practice for anxiety, anxiety certainly doesn't need to include all of these. The practice could be very simple or it could be a little bit more complex, but it must suit the person and their needs. When designing a practice for someone, some of the things I take into consideration are the, their quality of sleep, any medications they're on, their pain levels, their stress levels, the time someone has available. So someone might only have five or 10 minutes to spare a day, or perhaps someone is available to do a 20 minute practice in the morning, as well as a 20 minute practice at night. And then most importantly, I tend to like to find out what brings them joy and what they do for fun. It's really important to have that good connection relationship with a student. My aim is always to bring you back to a state of balance. So now we're going to try a short relaxing practice to wind down and prepare for sleep. And I do apologise for those who are perhaps on the other side of the world who might have to race off to work after this. Sleep issues can commonly be found with anxiety. So I'm just going to be using some of the techniques and methods I talked about previously within this practice to assist with getting to and staying asleep. So you're welcome to participate or you're welcome to just sit and listen. Either is fine. If you want to, you can sit nice and upright in your seat with your feet on the floor or perhaps you can lay down with your knees bent and your feet flat. You're welcome to have your eyes softly open or you're welcome to close your eyes all the way down. So what I want you to do to start off with is to just be aware of your natural breath, your free breathing and how it is for you right now. Nothing to change, just observing the breath. And then I'd like you to gradually extend your exhale breath just a little longer each time you breathe out until you've found a comfortable long exhale breath. And 
And then we can match some movement into the breathing. So perhaps on your next inhale, inhaling the arms might extend wide with soft elbows. And on the exhale, letting the arms come back to give yourself a nice gentle hug. On the inhale, letting the arms open and expand. And on that nice long exhale, bring the arms around to give yourself a nice cuddle. One last time, opening, breathing in, slow exhale, giving yourself a nice cuddle. At the end of the exhale, let the hands rest into the lap and let your attention rest down to your feet now. This time on your next inhale, letting the heels lift up off the floor to come onto tiptoes. Followed by that nice long exhale, letting the heels come down, touching gently to the floor. Inhale once more, lifting the heels up. Long, slow exhale out, heels down to the floor. Last round, inhale, lifting. Exhale down. For the next four rounds, we're going to combine the two together so that on your inhale, your arms are opening, expanding, and the heels are lifting off the ground. And taking that nice long breath out, giving yourself another cuddle, letting the heels touch the floor. Inhale, opening. Slow exhale, coming back to centre. Two more times with your own breath. And when you're done, letting the hands rest back down in your lap once more. We're going to keep our nice long exhale for the four rounds of breath coming up, but I'd like you to block your ears with your fingers or cover them with your hands. And on the four exhales, I want you to hum as you breathe out. It doesn't have to be loud. It just has to be nice and quiet. Four long breaths humming as you breathe out with the fingers and the ears. And at the end of that last slow, long breath out, letting the hands rest down in the lap front more. We'll let the hands be comfortable on the floor beside you if you're laying down. And just returning to your natural free breath. Then I'd like you to bring your attention down to the centre of your body, perhaps just below the sternum. And I'd like you to imagine a light here, a gentle, soft light within the centre of your body, a light that is steady and calm, a light that is unflickering, a light that is unaffected by suffering, Keeping your attention there. Linking to that connection of that steady light within you. The steadiness is always within you. Unaffected by suffering. 
unaffected by sorrow, calm and still. Staying here for as long as you like, linking with that light within you. Or when you're ready, bringing movement back to the body, opening your eyes.